Nice to have you here at our picture. Thank you. Thank you. It's, um, I love what you've done with the place. It's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've made the effort though, haven't you? Yeah. It, it looks better in, in an edited version. Okay. <laughs> when my face is out. Yeah. Is this always here? Yeah. It, I like it. It's a nice touch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. You said to me a couple of years ago that a very interesting thing. Um, about your point of view in your routines, that you're not the victim in your jokes or in your stories. You're more of a spectator. Uh, could you develop on that? Or? Yeah, I suppose it's about like, um, I also said, leave me alone. I know, <laughs> two years ago, but yeah, here we are. No, I, um, no, I basically, I think I look at the stories. It's like if I'm talking to somebody in the audience, there's a lot of people will grab the, the heckler and they'll punch down on them. Yeah. Whereas I always think we should celebrate, like most people that want to get involved are just there to have fun, you know? So I think with a lot of the stories, and also now my kids are growing up, you know, like most kids do, I, 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 I don't want to be too cruel in, the, in any of the observations and make them like, proper victims you know mm. but I think um, yeah I, I just I, I'm a I'm a people watcher um, I my my wife says I stare too much and um, and I think there isn't I would feel awful if if someone saw themselves in the story or if, even if I you know I, I'm also n not a victim but I'm also I try not to be the hero. I think, yeah, I think yeah. that's what comedy, yeah. I don't know what you think of comedy, but I sort of go, I don't like it when, when the comedian wins, mm. you know? Yeah. So I like it when they fall over yeah. and break something. Yeah. You, know? you put yourself in strange positions. Yeah, uh, yeah. Strange situations. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> strange yes. situations, like the tick, the fast thing. Oh, yeah. dad's got the fast thing. And we have yeah, to, uh, yeah. Uh, it's, um, it's about me living in this world of not knowing what the hell to do. Hmm. And my answer to it is always wrong. I think that's the way yeah, I like yeah, comedy. Yeah. You know, um, but I, I enjoy um, that joke when the audience will see themselves in the joke. Mm. So, and they'll go, that's me, yeah. that's me. And yeah. I think that's the greatest laugh yeah. any comedian can yeah. get. Well, you started out uh, doing stand-up 20 years ago or something. And, and uh, was this the, this point of view, uh, so to speak, it was that... Um, was that something you had from the start, or did you did you find it during the way? Or I've always been a nice person. <laughs> Hello, mum. No, I am. Um, no, I've I've always tried to be. I think it's very important to be likable, mm. you know, and that's why I think I don't have victims within the stories. Um, I and also moving here to Sweden, the, the, I, I celebrate this country as well. Like I try and lift it in the sense of my comedy. There aren't any real victims. It's all like, we're kind of all victims of what this yeah. place is. Um, I've always wanted to be the host of the party. Yeah. So a comedy show is, wow, we're all together. This is great. Um, so I think from the start, it was always that. It was always not wanting to be, um, for me, it's like, it's, it's about not the guy isn't the hero. That's the really important for me in comedy where I think the story should always be um, that they miss out or they, they, yeah. they bang their head. So I've, I've always had that, yeah, from yeah, the yeah. start. Yeah. Uh, and when we, talked before a couple of years ago, I believe, you, you said that you develop your routines by asking questions. Um, could you yeah, explain? Yeah, I think, um, I think that comes from the initial thing as well. I know that's the Seinfeld thing of like, is this a thing, you know, uh, or is this funny, you know. I, I think is, 
it, it does become that. I, I've had observations about Svadia, which I've gone, that's weird. And then it just doesn't, it, it doesn't hit on people. Okay. Like people are like, no, no, okay. okay. It, and I What's think- What's the reason then? I what? think if, if not enough people know it, okay. if it's a, it, it, I think you sort of have to have those. I try not to, the, the major, it's the majority observation I go for mm -hmm. where everybody can get it. And that comes through questions. Yeah. And that could come through an audience. Is this a thing, you know? Um, but also if you can get the ones that are 5% no or 80%, if you can get the ones in the middle oh, okay. where they're like, oh yeah. yeah. Those are the best. Okay, so you know, it's not a good thing to, to go for the, the 80 or 90% uh, yeah. thing or either angle. I, 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 think, I think it comes from like fir first thought. Yeah. Like, and I, I also think that was with the audience. If, the, if they're interacting with you, I think first thought you should not say, and then you try and come up with a second idea. Yeah, yeah. You know. Because if you go for the 80, 90% angle where everyone, almost everyone, uh, can recognize uh, themselves in, in, a, in a joke, is that too mainstream? Will that turn out to be too mainstream? That's why you go in the middle. That's why you look for the. the I the, don't mind the, being uh, mainstream. <laughs> okay. You know, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't know what I am, really. <laughs> I don't know if I am, you know. I think what it is, is. I've done five tours here now, mm -hmm. and I think you you start off with IKEA jokes, yeah. and <laughs> you know, and the false one that everybody is blonde and beautiful, mm -hmm. and then you just start getting more and more into society here. So you dig deeper, and I think those are the better observations. Um, but I would still if there was an Ikea observation that hit people in the head, I would be, you know, I, I'd, I'd say it. Yeah. I, I've got, I wouldn't hold back. No, but, 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 but it's interesting because you're, you're an observationer. You're, you're, you're doing observation because you're a foreigner in this country. Yes. And do you think that you would have a different, different angle if you toured the UK, for instance? Um, yeah, I was, I've, I've, I've sort of, I was born in England and I grew up in New Zealand. So when I, when I was in New Zealand, I was always not the New Zealander. And then I'd come back to England and I was like, they were like, g'day, you're Crocodile Dundee, basically. And then Sweden, you come here and they're like, Meh. they don't really care so much. They try and work out. But when I was doing comedy in, uh, in England, I was very much the... The New Zealand point of view, and you know, isn't isn't England a bit crazy? You know, um, and I think I think England is a. Um, I think there are so many comics now. I don't think you get as many non-Swedish comics here. You know, um, whereas in England, I think there was a lot of. Australians, New Zealanders, African comics, all coming over and kind of doing the same observations. But um, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's something I've kind of, I've, I've kind of fought with a little bit. Like sometimes, like I've got a new tour, which starts in, I don't know when this goes out. Let's hope the editing is quicker than this, but it starts in October 2024. So if you're watching it in 2026, um, yeah. What a you're great, too late. What a great two <laughs> years we had. And uh, I can't believe what Hans did. Yeah. I can't believe <laughs> that moment. Um, especially, yeah, naked. Um, yeah. But I, um, I basically, I, I just, I, I, I struggle with the whole thing of like, what is a comedian's job? Is it to observe? Is it to entertain? Or is it to tell the truths? You know, is it to pour out? Um, and maybe I've got rose-tinted glasses um, on on Sweden. Maybe I see things in a happier light than maybe it is. But do I think audiences want to buy a ticket to watch me complain? Like, 
it goes back to that victim thing. Yeah, life is hard, and and it's it's we're living in like awful times. And but it, I think a comic's job is to just just lift, you know. And and if it's if it's an observation about Hasa Frederick or something like that, that you know it could be as as. Um, it, I don't think it has to be deep. I think it has to be really just a thing that is entertaining. Yeah. Two, two last questions then. Yeah. Your, your body language, how important is that? Uh, for instance, in, in the fasting routine, I, I find it pretty important. Uh, we see daddy, well, everyone's mm. checking everyone else uh, else's body uh, yeah. after, after those ticks, uh, for those ticks. And, and uh, so, so how much do you... It, does it come naturally, or, or do you do you do you think about it? I I haven't thought about it, and I I think when you see yourself, like I think when you look in the mirror, most of us go, oh yeah, it's all right, or this is what I've got. When I'm on stage, I think I'm kind of gliding around, and you know this kind of almost like a majestic horse, you know, galloping and, and then I see myself and I'm crouched over and I'm leaning in and people go, wow, your energy. And I don't, I don't, I, it's just me, you know, it's just, okay. um, and then a friend of mine once said, it's really awful. He was like the MC and he said, your jeans were too low. So every time you bent forward, there was just like this little <laughs> bum crack which really took away the glamour of the gig, you know. Okay. So okay. I, I think sometimes, um, I, I think sometimes you emphasise the point by going in and 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 doing the body language. Um, but it's not thought out. No, it's no, not, no. It's uh, not planned. No, it's no, not. No. And and also, um, uh, it's 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 really. It's really amazing sometimes what what will get a laugh, what will a little look, or you know, just and and I, I think I think that takes years, man. I really do. I honestly think comedy. I, I don't know if I feel I've found my voice, but I think it takes it takes so many years. So you know, like some days. Um, some days you think, I'll oh, just stand still and say, and don't take it out of the stand. Mm -hmm. And, you know. Stephen Wright. Yeah, like yeah, the, like the, the, the jokes, <laughs> make that, yeah. <laughs> but also other times people go, do you want to put a headset on? And I've done that and I'm, I'm using my arms too much. I'm overemphasizing, uh, you know, and you think, I think, the closer you can get to yourself is always important in comedy. It, it, the closest uh, person. I mean, you're, you're, a, you're, a, you're an exaggerated form of yourself. You, I mean, you're not going up there as, you know, as you or we are. We are going up as a sense of ourselves. But, yeah, sometimes I see myself and I'm like, what is wrong? Like, why... Why that? Why, you know, why move around? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And I'm not sure. It, I think in a live setting, I think it works. I think sometimes on a, you know, people are watching on their phones now. You know, they're watching these comedy specials that have, you know, been directed. And they're watching on these little screens. And then the comedian's running around. And it's, it's, yeah. it's a bit difficult for that. So I think sometimes... The energy has to be, um, it should be thought through, but with me, it's not. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? I, I, I see your point. Uh, I mm. agree with you. And the last question then, you, you, uh, I remember the first time I saw you was 2010. You were a support, supporting act for Asnuyan, I, I think. Uh, I didn't know who you were. And then, then you developed, I think, the Fika Tor was yes. the, first, the first one. And then when, when you look back um, at those 14 years, mm. How um, how do you think you've developed as a comedian? You, you said you found your voice I now. And uh, I still uh, uh, riddled with self-doubt. I still 
beginner tour going, you know, like, I, for example, I don't drink alcohol. Should I talk about that? You know, like, th there's always those things. Does the audience, if they bought a ticket, do they want to hear me say these stories? Probably not. I don't know. Um, but I think over the 14 years, I haven't, um, I haven't got bored of it. I, 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 and I'm not an ego, egotistical kind of, I need to be on stage, but I, I genuinely love it. I, 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 I think it is one of the, the privileges of life to be able to be standing there saying something into the microphone and the audience there are laughing. It's just, there is nothing that I still haven't, I mean, don't tell my wife this, but <laughs> I still haven't found anything that is ex it's ex exhilarating, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you watch a clip of yourself uh, 13, 14 years ago, uh, a 13 year old clip, mm. uh, can you sort of go, uh, oh, I don't do that anymore. I'm not, I talking think, about, I'm not talking about the jokes. I'm just talking about, oh, I don't do that. Uh, I wouldn't do that Yeah, today. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I, what has also happened with me is I've gone from, you know, being a real kind of like, what's going on here? Then, you know, I've got married, so I could talk about that. I've had these, I've had uh, kids and uh, the people come along and my kids have got bigger. So the stories are different now. So I can't, they're not, you know, they're not a preschool you know, yeah. doing baby stuff. Yeah. They're, they're, the blue socks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I think you mature with your stuff. Um, but I, yeah, I, I would look back now and think, also my first couple of tours, I did a thing where I took photos where I was doing the show. So I would come to, let's say, Ostersund, and I would get there early, I would take photos, and then I'd do the show, I'd be doing the show, and then on the screen, I'd have photos of that day. And I literally, it could be like a traffic light, it could be, yeah, yeah, I you remember know, that. I yeah, remember. it could actually be mm. nothing. And But for them, it was like, oh my God, he has been here. Wow, you know. So I think early on with those first few tours, I don't think I had the material. <laughs> so I probably had half a show of stand-up and the photos. So I'd improvise around the photos. But now I think I've become a bit more material heavy, you know. I don't have the screens, I don't have the photos. So it's just jokes and an audience yeah. participation. You're more relaxed, you can lean back or... Yeah, I don't think I'm as manic um, and I don't think I'm as confused with life. I kind of think I know myself a bit more. Um, it's still, it still taps you on the shoulder, this game, and it says, you think, oh, I've solved this. This is the Rubik's Cube. It's, there it is. And they go, no, you've cheated. That, we, we're going to give you a lesson here. And, you know, I, 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 I've got tricks to get myself out of trouble, but I do feel some days it still, it, it still owns me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, 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 I'm not, I've never... Yeah, yeah. You know, I've never gone on to the top of the mountain. Yeah. You know. Jerry Seinfeld says, when things go wrong in stand-up, and let's face it, it always goes yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah. Something yeah. like that. And that's, uh, that's uh, almost like life. You can, yeah. you can pre prepare as much as you want, but... Uh. Yeah, and I... Yeah, I, I sort of get messages from people who were going through, like, crap times, and they, they see a show, and... That is just, whoa, the responsibility. Like some nights you walk off and I, I don't party, I don't go out afterwards. I'm sitting in the hotel room and it's just, oh, it's just the, 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 the buzz of it all. And the audience, they're going out and having a night, yeah. you know. And I'm in the hotel room watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> like, you know, 
wondering if I should get something from the mini bar. So I think um, I, I want every show as well to be the best thing that people see. Not, I know it can't be that, but I want them to have the best feeling, mm. you know. And I think that is something I have learned. Sometimes it's not about what you say, it's how you make people feel, yeah. you know. I think that's, you know, I think an audience can can be your best friend and then other nights they're just laughing at you. I, I don't mean, uh, I don't mind either if people laugh at me as long as they get a few laughs. Many thanks, Al Pitcher. It's been uh, a pleasure, uh, mate. I said 10 minutes, so we've probably talked for 20 and well, I could, we could go on for another Netflix two special. hours. Netflix you're special. So interesting, you're so interesting to talk to. Well, nobody has ever said that. Thank you. I'll sign for the club tomorrow.